I mean, it's possible that, that, that they are. I mean, like I said, I have a brand new truck. Had it not broke down, I would probably be doing pretty decent, you know, um, but then again, it's just all about your fuel costs and all of that stuff. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Gentlemen, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Amanda in the building. <laughs> so we, we just going to jump right into this uh, foolery right here, man. <laughs> so you... You drove for controversial company Super Ego. How how long yeah. was you with them before you said to yourself, it's time to go? No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I would say it was probably about five, four or five weeks, maybe. I don't know. I don't even remember what day I got there. It was about four or five weeks ago, though, I think. All right, so let me let me bring it let let me bring it all the way back, man. I mean, what made you decide to to go with them? I mean, did you not read all the reviews? Did you not see all of the Actually no. I didn't I didn't see anything. I've heard, but I didn't see anything. But you know, I have a speeding ticket in my personal vehicle for nineteen over and I've been off the road for quite a while anyway, like it's been a couple of years. So everybody was wanting to send me with a trainer, and I didn't want to go with a trainer. So that's the only reason I went with them. I was going to stick with them long enough that I wouldn't have to go with a trainer if I go to another company. Okay. So how long have you been driving? Prior? How, how long you? How long you been driving all together? How long you had your CDLs? Mm -hmm. Since 2016. Okay. Okay. So what about seven, six, seven years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, why would you if you if you had your CDL for that long and you I'm I'm assuming you was driving prior to getting with Super Ego, why would you need to go back out with another trainer? Um, Maybe I missed I that. I'm sorry. The, uh, no, yeah, I was not over the road in the past couple of years. If you're not over the road a certain amount of time in the last three years, they make you go with a trainer. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's what some of these um, mega carriers they do yeah. require that. Okay, so yeah, and I was local, so okay, okay, so you said bump it, super ego came knocking on your door. So did did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? Well, I had gone back there. I had gone there in January with somebody. We were going to co-drive, and I don't know whatever happened when he was out there. Well, he ended up quitting, so we ended up not going back out there. Um, so I was already in their system and approved, so I just went ahead and went with them. I mean, I knew what I heard, but at the same time, like you know, everybody has their own opinion. You you just wanted to find out for your for yourself, but when your when your partner quit, did he did he kind of get back in contact with you and just be like, "Hey, sis, uh, I quit this place, and this is the reason yeah. why." Did did he do that? Yeah, he was saying that he was broke down for a long time and all this stuff. So I don't know. Um, he was broke down for like four or five days before I was supposed to get on the truck with him. Hold on right quick. Hold on. Okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so he bounced, but you decided to stay yeah. and, and try to, try to work it out. Try to, you know, try to, uh, you know, try to push through. So, yeah, well, you know, and here's what I, the, I'm going to just tell you, you know, what I, what I figured it out was, you know, they don't set their drivers up for success. And that's like a big problem. Like you are not really supporting your drivers. It's not about your drivers at all. Um, I lease a 2023 Kenworth from them. It only had 40,000 miles. 
So that's where my issue came in with them is when, you know, I got the truck, there was something wrong with it. And they told them, they said, you know, I'm going to drive it and I'm going to just see, because once the truck warms up, the, um, the light went off. So, you know, we get down the road or whatever, and then it comes on saying that there's a leak in the radiator somewhere, but there wasn't, I didn't find one, but there ended up being a hole in the radiator the next day but i drove it off their lot so now i'm responsible like for the truck payment for that week that it broke down okay so you know let, what me, I'm let me stop you right here so you you noticed that the 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 truck had a problem with the radiator and you you took it you took it to the shop you took it to the shop to get it fixed well no this is what happened so when i first got in the truck i'm not used to kenworth so usually i drive straight liners so kenworth is new to me all the dashboard lights were on but as the truck warmed up and got started the lights started slowly all going off where so they all went off eventually well then the one kept coming on and going off that easily could have been a sensor or something like you know whatever mm-hmm. but i did let them know like hey there's this light that keeps coming on but I don't see any leaks you know I've checked whatever I don't see any leaks I said so I guess I'm gonna I'm letting you know that there's a problem there could be a problem you know and I took it to pick up my load okay and the light would come on and it would go off as I'm making my trip it would come on and go off come on and go off eventually stopped at a pilot like a day or two later and the radiator was um had a hole in it okay and, um it was a faulty it was a faulty radiator all right they so- were supposed to push that truck payment back because i had just had the truck for not even two loads hmm. so they were supposed to work with me on that truck payment and they did not i spent all week so how am i making the money for it hmm. okay so, so you're you're at the pilot still with with the truck after finding out that it that the that the radiator was faulty. Right. Well, I had taken it like, yeah, I was at the pilot. Um, I had, it was on my second delivery with them. So I was at the pilot when it happened. I was mailing my paperwork. Um, then I came back out and there was radiator fluid everywhere. I pulled over. I checked and it spraying out you know and i let him know like hey i just got this truck like two days ago um i took it to the kenworth dealership right up the road and um they said the radiators are faulty well it's a brand new truck it's only got forty thousand miles on it but um they said that it's a common problem with the kenworth is the faulty radiators and they didn't have it in stock so i sat for like four days hmm. That was Easter weekend, so there was no loads Easter weekend either. So it was a whole week, and they still charging me a truck payment when I just got the truck. All right, so they they hit you off with the they they hit you off with the truck payment, but you also mentioned that they hit you off with the with the repairs for the for the radiator too. No, right? no, it it was actually under warranty. Okay, okay, good, good, so, good, good, good. But I lost money not being able to move, but I still had to pay the truck payment and the trailer rental and all that stuff. So Plus I had put fuel in the truck to start the truck. Wow. So right now, this so this is your first week. You're in a hole on your very first week. Yes. Yes. Wow. Did they, let me ask you this. When they, when they assigned the truck to you, do they have a shop there to go over these uh e- these equipments before they even give it to you guys? Yes, they are supposed to. They're supposed to be inspected, detailed, and all of that. Jeez. So right now you you you're in a hole for the first week. Okay. Yes. So you must have thought to yourself for the first week. So for the first week, you you must have thought to yourself like. Oh, okay, that's that's fine. It happens. All right, we get the truck fits. Let's go grinding for the next uh for the next following week. How was it for the next following week? Because now you have to cover for being in the hole the first week. Now you got to do double do 
du double duty the next following week to at least come on with a profit, right? My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Yeah, and I did it. I mean, I got out of the hole real quick. I mean, that that wasn't an issue for me at all. Um, I just don't feel like that they were being honest with the race at that point. Um, and so that's where that part comes in now. Um, I got myself out of the hole, but at the same time, it seems like the further I get out of the hole, the lower the rates are going for the loads. Mm. If that makes any sense. Okay. So it was like they just wanted me to break just about even, maybe. I mean, my one paycheck, it was a pretty decent paycheck. But like I said, I was in the hole, so they took that out. So Otherwise, what, I had a really great week. So what about these rates that you're talking? Um, your 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 fleet manager is getting you loads Listen. at at what <laughs> at, at what kind of rates, man? Listen, I told them I am not doing nothing under roughly two dollars a mile. They are giving me loads for a dollar a mile. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. But but when I get in the hole with them, I start getting better rates again. Because now they're late on their check payment because they need me to make the check payment and my truck's not moving. So now I'm just being funny with them because really I don't need the money like that. I can do anything. So I'm just being funny at this point because now I see that you're playing games with me. Like I get the higher rates when I start falling in the hole with you guys. But as soon as I get myself out the hole, I get lower rates. Mm. Sound, sounds like playing with the money to me. What do you, so, um, let, let me ask you this, Amanda. What, what do you say to guys? Because there's, you know, I, I, my channel have a slew of super ego content on here. And I have like guys uh -huh. that come on in the in the comment sessions over here talking about, well, I, we don't know what we're talking about. I'm talking to the wrong people. How come I'm not talking to people that's winning with super ego? What do you what do you say to 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 the naysayers about uh that they're making you know, that they're making bank was super ego. I mean, it's possible that, that, that they are. I mean, like I said, I have a brand new truck. Had it not broke down, I would probably be doing pretty decent, you know. Um, but then again, it's just all about your fuel costs and all of that stuff. Um, I don't know. It's very well that they could be. They could be owner operators and just pulling the freight. I don't know. I mean, they could already own their truck. They might have a lower truck payment. But the thing with the lower truck payment is, is that truck's going to break down any day. It's got a lot of miles, period. All right. Like, mine had 40,000 miles. You know what I mean? So it's less likely to break down. All right. So you, you, you at least gave them about enough. Well, first week, second week. You you gave them about another three weeks. So within that three weeks time, it 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 it, it was just getting worse and worse from from that. I wouldn't say like I mean the rates were going lower, but then again I was playing my little game back where I just wasn't moving the truck. I'm not moving the truck for no dollar a mile. I'm just not. So right. I sit there. Said to come back with a better rate, then I might move my truck. All right, Amanda. I mean, so when when did it came the time that you decided, hey, I'm done. I'm about to start this truck up. I'm about to what was well. Let me ask you this: when you decided to go ahead and and call it quits and started driving the truck back, you know, back to uh, back to your home base, was the fuel car on, or was your truck already fueled up before you decided to? start going in the opposite direction <laughs> um so 
I um, took a load from Cleveland and I fueled up in my hometown, Toledo. Um, so that gave me a full tank and I was four hours from my delivery. So I went four hours from the delivery. And then from there, mm-hmm. I accepted a load so that I could fill up my truck to go to Tennessee. What can I get you? I'd like a large coffee. Okay, so hot coffee? Hot coffee. Okay, room for cream? Totally leave room for cream. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice? This is my voice. Mm, wait a minute now. So you so you didn't go home? You went to Tennessee? <laughs> I went to Tennessee and I still have their truck. I've been driving it around Tennessee. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Lordy, lordy, lord. But the load that you got from Cleveland was supposed to be delivered in Tennessee? I delivered it in Kentucky. No, in I Ke- delivered it in Kentucky. And then I accepted a load. And they started calling me like, where are you going? You're going the wrong way. And I said, I don't know where I'm going. I think I'm lost. <laughs> and they asked me to check my GPS. I said, I can't because, you know, there's no shoulder here to pull over. It's not a safe haven. So I said, when I can, I will. So at that point, like I just ignored my phone for about an hour. And then I pulled over and I told him I wasn't feeling well. I was going to take a nap. Um, So that gave me more time to plan how I was going to do everything. And then so (laughs) they, um, I turned my uh, phone on airplane mode. And I went to Tennessee. <laughs> Amanda, is is it true? Because oh, wait, I accepted the, but I accepted the load, and then I fueled up so that I could go to Tennessee. So oh. like I was, they thought I was supposed to go on to the shipper in Ohio, and I'm going like further south towards Tennessee. I'm going further into Kentucky. Okay, now let me ask you this: you you accepted the load that was supposed to go back to Ohio. It, let me ask you this. Is it true? No. no. I accepted a load I was supposed to pick up in Ohio. So oh, I'm that in you Kentucky supposed delivering. To pick up. Okay. And I was supposed to go pick up in Ohio. Gotcha. Because uh, it was like right inside the border of Kentucky. It was like gotcha. not very far. It was like maybe an end of the border. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm from Ohio. So shout out to the Ohio in the building. That's what's up. Um, so, is it true that controversial company Super Eagle do they turn your fuel card off if you're not on the load? Yes. When you accept the load, they turn it on. As soon as you deliver that load, it turns off until you get a new load. Wow. Which, that's not uncommon. Like, if you go to Western Express, they tell you which fuel stop you can even fuel up at. And your card will not work for any other fuel stop but the one that they designate for you to stop at first. Or whatever order they stop in. So it's not uncommon. It keeps people from stealing their fuel. That's, yeah, or keeps people from driving their trucks all the way down to Tennessee. (laughs) I mean, Ah! listen... They so, owe me. so a lot of people, you know, so, uh, only a few people in the in a comment session is giving you a little backlash. Like the one gentleman says that, um, uh, that now that you're not on a load and you're taking their truck to where it's not supposed to be, they said that you know that the company is in their rights to you know to call the laws on you to come and. To come and get you out. I mean, to come and get you up out that truck. Um, have any? Well, have anybody from the company, you know, reached out to you and say, "Hey, if you don't bring us our truck back, we're gonna," no, you know, not at all. They haven't said anything to me about it. So I mean, it's not like they don't know where the truck is. They know where the truck is. They know where I'm at. 
So I'm not stealing nothing. That truck is leased to me. Oh, okay. okay. They're going to get it back. I'm not taking it to, like, you know, some place and parting it out or nothing. I'm not doing nothing to the truck. I'm not damaging the truck. They'll get it back when I'm done with it. And I'll be done with it when I'm done with my orientation. Damn it, man. <laughs> so you... <laughs> So, I had to find my way to them for orientation, and I had to pay for my um, cell phones at orientation. They can come get their truck when I'm done with my other orientation, and it's just that simple. If I had to pay my way to them, why wouldn't they have to pay their way to get their truck? I had to pay my way to get the truck. Mm. Are you a well? As of right now, you as of right now, you you you're not making no money, so you you're not inspecting. Any any more settlements from them? No. Well, see, here's the thing. I made sure that I planned this out well enough that the last three weeks they have not gotten a truck payment. Two weeks at least, probably two weeks. They have not. I have not made any enough money to cover the fuel or any of the truck payments at all. I guarantee that. So they're way in the hole. I'm way in the hole with them. But what are they going to do? Honestly, what are they going to do? Come and get their truck. Like the lawyer said, because I did speak to a lawyer, the lawyer said, it's a foreign company. There's nothing that they can do. Yeah, you know what? In nobody's bank account. You, you know what? I'm glad you kind of mentioned that because I talked to a lot of drivers that said that they're not having no kind of issues with any lawyers out of the Illinois area that they can go up against these uh, foreign companies, man. And it's crazy. Like they can actually no, hold your paycheck, you, they can hold your money, they could they could put they they aren't you afraid that they might put uh put some some stuff on your D uh on your DAC report or, or on your PSP or anything like that? No. no. To be honest with you, no. I mean I got my I like I've got this mapped out. I'm like, I mean, they gonna come with their truck tomorrow. Was tomorrow? Yes, probably tomorrow. Um, I'm not worried, not whatsoever. I mean, my DAC report has always been clean. I've never had an issue. Um, so when it comes to them, I'm truly, I'm not worried. They can get their truck. I'm not damaging it. I'm not hurting nothing. So they can just come get their truck. So you just said to yourself, bump it. Let me just go ahead and break this contract. But before I do, let me get down to this other company so I can make sure I get my foot in the door. I I had worked for this company before, so I already knew I could come back. That wasn't like an issue. I was having my little fun with them while they've had fun with everybody else. You know what I mean? They're having fun with people, so why not have fun with them? Right. I'm I, not going to support a, a company that sets their drivers up for failure. You are for yourself, and you're not for everybody. And that's not a like that's not somebody I want to work for. Does that make sense? It's funny. Right. It, it's funny that you said that you said that because you know you said in your post that it's not about you. It's about you know it's about doing a a service for all of the drivers that got treated some kind of way at controversial company yes. Super Eagle. And it just why seems would I want to? Oh, go ahead. Why would I want to support that? Well, let me ask you this: since you since you asked that question, let me ask you this: if you wasn't going through all of the issues and you was getting what you want from the company, then would your feelings would be different? Would your would your feelings have changed? No, because it's not even about I wasn't getting paid because I was getting paid. I did get a nice paycheck. And had I kept working and, you know, and stopped, not played these games with them, then I would make, I probably would make money because they fixed my logs. I could run as much as I wanted to. And really, you know, if I'm telling them I'm going to move for this amount of money, they're going to keep looking. I made my dispatcher look through loads. I wouldn't accept them unless they were hired. But it's the point that she was offering me a dollar, knowing that you have higher paying loads in there. They're not stupid. So it got to the point where, like, I knew what they were playing games, and I was playing the games back with them. So do you think? Do, do you think that 
Well, of course. Um, I'm I'm thinking that, you know, some of those dispatchers, the fleet managers, you know, they they have they they high priority drivers. You know, those those I guess those are the drivers that be coming back in the comment section talking about, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about and and I make money over there and this, that, and the third. I guess it's those drivers are the ones are the favorites. Do you do you feel that? Uh, being that you was like the new guy, the the low man on the totem pole, that you know that they they said, hey, let me go ahead and get my top tier driver this low, but they turn it down, and then they'll be like, okay, well, we'll just give it to this brand new driver right here. I mean, I don't feel like it was that at all. I mean. They're probably running illegal logs, to be honest with you. I don't know. Because there's plenty of times they fix my logs. I'm not going to lie. I was like, okay, I'll fix your logs so you have more drive time. I'll drive 15, 16, 17 hours a day sometimes. So, I mean, yeah, I made money because I drove a little bit more. So controversial. Well, you know what? I always tell people, yeah, you might not know what you keep saying. <laughs> but um but yeah they you know they, there's been a couple of guys that i talked to today yeah that happens <laughs> it happens well, you know and i've worked for companies where people sit there and say nothing but bad things about them but when i tell you i went to that company and i seen the good in the company too there was good in that company you know what i mean where everybody was you know they're um they didn't care for the company, but I'll defend it because it was a good company. It was a good starter company. It was something that, you know, it was one of those companies that were you just out of school, it would be good for you to go to and get your experience before you go to a better company. You know what I mean? But a lot of people say negative, but you really, it's all on your own personal experience. I had a great dispatcher, you know, I built a good relationship with them, my driver manager and all that. So I made money. To me, I felt like I made decent money. Where some people are like, well, no, we didn't make no money at that company. But it all depends on your relationship with your dispatcher and your driver manager. As always. How hard you're willing to work, where you're willing to go. And as long as the truck <laughs> stay stay rolling, y'all <laughs> y'all good to go. Y'all good to go. Amanda May. <laughs> Woo. Well, well, you know, I've been, it's been a nice little joy, right? I mean, it was fun. Why well, it lasted. They're going to, they, they'd send yeah. somebody out to uh, get the truck tomorrow, but you're, you're good to go at the, at the new company where you at now. Um, oh yeah. I hope everything works out for you in the future. You are an Ohioan. I'm from Ohio, Cleveland, yeah. Ohio. That's what's up. Um, so the company that you're driving that you're driving for now is out of Tennessee. Is is this company you driving all 48? You doing regional or or what? Um, I think I'm going to probably do. I really, I'll go anywhere. It doesn't matter. But probably from Texas back this way i probably won't go through the west coast because i know that um there's not a lot of freight coming back so and i got kids um so i don't i don't want to be gone too long at a time so would you so i mean everybody now let me put this disclaimer out there everybody you know your your experience is always going to be different from everybody else's um Again, yeah. even with all of the bad publicity, the bad reviews, the negativity that controversial company Super Ego comes up with, we're in a Facebook group that's that's like literally hates on uh, Super Ego. But still, the experience lies on that individual. You know, they'll they'll probably. Put it to the side and say, hey, I, I hear you. I hear you. I, I still want to see 
how they going to actually treat me. And when I get in there, I, I can go from there. Do you still suggest a super ego to, uh, to anybody that, you know, especially been in a situation like you, because, you know, you, you, you know, you haven't been driving for a while, but super ego gave you that opportunity to say, Hey, you know, come with us. We'll bring you in. You know, we'll we'll overlook all of that stuff. So, would you suggest that anybody that have any issues or anything like that to to try Super Eagle? Um, how about a smoothie? What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee, buddy. Relax. I would suggest them to try something like Western Express or Swift before I would ever suggest Super Ego. Um, I mean, I would be like absolutely. 100% last resort super ego like and that's only and you better be looking for another job when you get there I mean but everybody has their own experience like I fully support that that whole thing right there um I tell people like if you want to try it try it it's for you you know that's that's your decision I'll tell you my experience I'll share with you other experiences but if you feel like you want to try it go for it like I support that but at the same time, like, I'm just not supporting a company that sets their drivers up for failure, and that's what they do. Big G's got it locked. Won't you let me on?